Hi. Today I thought we'd just do a quick follow-up video on the previous video about the isolation transformer and just explain how an isolation transformer works and why you might want to use one on your electronics workbench. So I'm not intending this to be a lecture or a course on magnetics but I thought I'd just reintroduce the basics of the transformer to you. So here we have the schematic symbol for the transformer and in this instance it consists of two windings wound around a ferromagnetic core. On the left we have the primary and on the right we have the secondary. The two coils themselves are completely isolated to DC, that is if we were to place a continuity meter between these two points here or these two points here uh, we'd hopefully get an infinite impedance. But when we apply an AC waveform to one of the windings we create a varying magnetic field which induces a voltage in the other winding. The relationship between the voltage that's induced between the two windings is described by this equation here. So if we have a one-to-one -one, um, number of windings on each side, if we were to apply a 230 volt waveform here, we'd also see the same 230 volt waveform on the secondary. And if we had half as many windings on the secondary side, according to this formula, you'd see instead of 230 volts on the secondary, we'd see 115 volts AC. And our second equation here just shows that we are indeed obeying the laws of physics. So if we have a transformer with twice the number of windings on the secondary as we do on the primary, our secondary voltage would be twice the primary voltage. However, uh, because power equals voltage times current, and we can't destroy or uh, create energy, if we were to draw, for example, one amp on the secondary, our primary voltage source would have to be able to supply two amps. So I'm sure you've all come across various kinds of transformers before. Here we have a standard construction laminated core transformer, we have a toroidal transformer, and we've got a digital audio transformer here. So in the case of the two transformers at the top here, we're gaining isolation but also stepping down the voltage. Uh, in the digital audio transformer here, what we're doing is just obtaining isolation, which means that we can remove any DC bias that may be present on the primary or the secondary. And this is a, quite a handy feature, and this is one of the reasons why you might want to use a desktop isolation transformer. So the types of transformer that I'm specifically talking about in this video are safety isolation transformers designed for mains operated equipment and it means that we can plug in a, a mains operated device to this transformer and then plug the transformer into a standard main socket and we'll gain our isolation here uh, but the device will still operate as normal because the output voltage from this transformer is still the standard mains voltage. So next we'll just go into a little bit of detail uh, into the two main reasons why you might want to use one of these on your workbench. So I thought I'd just give a bit of background information on the main distribution supply within the UK for residential houses. On the left here we have the distribution transformer at the substation and just for clarity I've only drawn the secondary windings. The three windings are connected in a Y configuration and the AC waveform is 120 degrees out of phase with each other on each winding. The star point of the transformer is connected directly to the system ground at the substation, so typically this would be a very large metal grid um, buried in the earth underneath the transformers uh, with quite a heavy conductor connected between that and the star point on the transformer. We then have our three phases which are traditionally distributed down the street and since we generally have houses only connected to single phase each house would alternately be supplied from L1, L2 and then L3. And then depending on the earthing configuration um, in that particular area um, dictates how the earth and neutral here are distributed to the houses. So we'll just talk about that briefly now. The first configuration we'll talk about is the TT supply. In this configuration, the household is provided with a phase conductor and a neutral conductor, but no earth conductor. 
The household would normally obtain uh, their earth conductor by driving an earth stake into the ground and the mass of earth is used to uh, provide the return path for the earth back to the system ground at the distribution transformer. The second way in which we can supply a main supply to the household is the TNS connection. And in this configuration, the household is provided with one phase conductor, a neutral conductor and a protective earth conductor. So three conductors enter the household and that is distributed around the house as normal. The third and most common configuration for any modern installation in the UK is the TNCS system. In this configuration, the house is provided with a phase conductor and a combined protective earth and neutral conductor, or PEN conductor. So the star point of the transformer, which is also earthed at the substation, is distributed to the households in that area, and at the inlet to the house is split back out from the PEN conductor into a separate neutral and protective earth conductor. So let's just imagine for a moment we've got our guy here who's working on his TV and he's got to have it plugged in so he can take some readings while it's running but he accidentally slips and comes into contact with uh, a live part inside the TV. Because we've got our star point of the transformer connected to the system ground um, anything in contact with the mass of Earth has a reasonable chance of having a low enough impedance that uh, some current will flow uh, between the um, live part and the earth conductor. So he's become now part of the path of the circuit, so we're coming up through the live conductor, uh, through him, through his arms, down through his feet, um, and then, you know, even if the impedance here is only a couple of hundred ohms, um, we're still going to get enough current there that potentially he could uh, suffer a fatal injury. So how can he work slightly more safely on his TV? So now our guy has gone and installed his isolation transformer um, and plugged his TV into that instead. Now there's some galvanic isolation between all of the mains grid and the TV that he's working on. So even if he comes into contact with a single live part inside the TV, there's now no return path back to the star earth point through the mass of earth that he's standing on. Uh, so this is a lot safer um, however, if he still if he um, comes into contact with two live points that are a different potential, he's still going to get current flow from arm to arm or from limb to limb, depending on what he's touching. So he's still got to be careful, but he's a lot safer from the accidental contact from uh, just you know, just a single live part. So this is one of those applications where having an isolation transformer is a really handy piece of equipment to have. So if you're piece of equipment, for example a switch mode power supply, needs to be plugged into the mains while you take some measurements. Um, having an isolation transformer providing that galvanic isolation and removing the, the uh, mains electricity grid from the system just means that um, you've got that one extra layer of safety before you receive you know, a fatal electric shock. Now, as I pointed out, you still have to be aware that um, you know, the circuit's still dangerous. If you come into contact with different parts of the circuit and they're at um, sufficient enough different potentials, you're still going to receive an electric shock. And, you know, in the case of a switch mode power supply, you've got your high energy storage capacitors there. If you come into contact with those, um, you're still going to have a bad day. So let's look at another reason why you might want to use a mains isolation transformer at your workbench. Let's say we've just built this circuit here for driving these LEDs directly from the mains and we rectify the mains coming in, we've got our capacitor for storage, we've got an inrush limiting uh, resistor and our LED current limiting resistor and then we've got our LEDs here. And we want to have a look and see what the uh, waveform across these LEDs looks like on our oscilloscope. Well, the crocodile clip on our um, scope probe is actually connected to mains earth and as we now know, um, the neutral conductor is also at mains earth potential. So as soon as you attach this little crocodile clip onto this node here, we effectively short out this resistor, which may mean that we um, you know, are dumping a huge amount of current through this tiny little scope probe lead, and you might blow up your scope and who knows what. So having an isolation transformer in here means that you can float your circuit. It should still behave as it would normally, 
but um, we're then removing again the the mains grid from our circuit, um, which means that we can you know probe as we need to anywhere in the circuit. So a mains isolation transformer can be incredibly useful if you need to either float your circuit away from mains potential or even if you wanted to float your test equipment away from mains potential. So instead of uh, connecting our circuit here directly to the isolation transformer, we could have plugged in the oscilloscope to the isolation transformer and then we can probe wherever we want. Um, and, you know, the same thing is true for any piece of equipment, not necessarily an oscilloscope where you may already have a differential probe or something like that. Um, so let's say, for example, you've got your Arduino that you've plugged into your computer and you've automatically mains earth referenced your circuit there because of the USB port. And let's say you needed to feed a signal from a SIGGEN into uh, some floating part in the circuit away from mains earth potential. You could plug your SIGGEN into the isolation transformer and then you can apply the ground and signal from your SIGGEN anywhere you want in the circuit without any worry about causing any damage. So I hope some of you found that video useful on why you might want to use a mains isolation transformer and until next time, thanks for watching.